Yo, what's up, fam? It's your favorite storyteller, Matt's D. Topic, nonfiction author, a little bit of fiction, too. Uh, you can check out the links in the description box to uh, read some of the stuff I've written. Um, listen, I wanted to uh, first off thank those of you that are uh, watching, those of you that follow me on YouTube um, or subscribe to me on YouTube, those of you who follow me and, you know, participate in my discussion threads on Facebook, uh, those who follow me on Instagram uh, at Matt D. Telford. I appreciate you guys so much. Listen, um, I had a revelation this morning watching a uh, recent upload by my one of my number one favorite uh, YouTubers uh, was uh, Thoughts Camera Action, a uh, young brother out in the UK. Uh, very inspiring, very good work. Uh, check his stuff out. He uh, he posts a lot of knowledge, a lot of history, uh, a lot of truth. So y'all check him out. Um, anyway, what occurred to me in watching the video that I saw today, um, it was, <laughs> listen, um, those of you who, who grew up in church or you're familiar with scripture, you know the passage of scripture that says, uh, what is it? Um, when the gospel has been preached in all nations, then shall the son of man appear. Now, <laughs> I think what has happened is, uh, mainstream Christianity, uh, evangelical Christian, blah, 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 with the, uh, you know, flying all over the world, uh, having their, you know, tent revivals or whatever you want to call it that they do when they go to other countries or whatever. And, you know, uh, broadcasting, their church services all over the world, they, uh, you know, you, you, you would, you'd be led to believe that that was the gospel being preached in all nations. They're like, Oh, when the gospel of Jesus Christ is preaching all nations. And you know what? Let me, let me, let me, let me hit you all with this revelation. I had this morning. Um, <laughs> the gospel is being preached right now in all nations. What is that gospel? Listen, um, and I and I did a little bit of math with this and just use a little common sense uh, application. When you think about it, you had the, you know, it's 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 widely accepted that. Excuse me. Keep it real here. I'm a soldier. I don't care. Uh, hopefully that didn't gross you out. Uh, just a little piece of lint. Anyway, um, the uh, the uh, doing do, doing a little common sense application and doing the math, uh, we know that you know it's widely accepted that. You know, after the the uh, crucifixion, um, subsequent resurrection and ascension of the Messiah, uh, what happened was, uh, you know, the 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 disciples, those who, who whom he made disciples of, went and made other disciples because that was one of his commandments. He said, "Make disciples of men," and they went. Uh, he said, "Go ye into therefore into all nations and preach the gospel." Now, what was that gospel? Was it uh, Jesus loves you? I doubt it. I doubt it. You got to understand why he came. He came to restore the lost sheep of Israel. Okay. The lost sheep of Israel. He came to restore them. Why? Because they had been for centuries at the time that he arrived, they had been under uh, uh, Hellenistic culture and then followed by the Roman culture, the Latin culture. So, or you, you want to, you want to just call it Greco Roman because the Romans did a lot of the same things that the Greeks did. I won't get into detail about what those things are, but, uh, most of them are wicked. It's going to call it what it is. We'll leave it at that. Leave that right out there. And at, at, at that point, the, uh, the, the Israelites, uh, or the, uh, you know, the Yahudi at to be specific, because we know that the Northern kingdom had already split and, you know, they were over, doing their thing over in these Americas. But that's a story for another day as well. Um, the Yahudi, Yahudin, the 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 ones that the history calls uh, the inhabitants of Judah, I'm going to leave it like that. Um, they were, they had been, you know, living like Greeks and they had made deals with the Romans and they had even, a lot of them had even abandoned their language and started speaking Greek and later Latin. So, these people were lost. They didn't even know who they were anymore. And that was a lot of the lot of a lot of the work he was doing was he went like the for example, he said, Hey, you are the salt of the earth. But if the salt has lost his ability to do what it does, which is preserve, preserve number one, number two, uh, uh flavor. Where, where will wherein will the earth be? I'm, I'm butchering it this morning, but where wherein shall the earth be salted? Okay. Um, he said it's therefore good for nothing but to be cast down and trodden under foot of men. That's exactly what was happening. He was trying to to talk to them in code to tell them exactly what was happening to them. They were being trodden under foot of the Romans and the Greeks on their own soil. 
So he came to restore them and try to teach them, try to get them to wake up and remember who they were. Remember the covenants of old. Remember the pro remember the covenant between Abraham, their patriarch, and the Most High Himself. The the very covenant that kept them preserved. Look, y'all got to remember who you are. Is what he his whole thing was. So the gospel that was being preached was, hey, you're not. Uh, <laughs> what's that scripture about that Paul the people used to say? Oh well, everybody, blah blah blah. He said, "There's neither Greek nor Jew, whatever, because we're all one, or man or woman, whatever." What he was trying to get them to see the Messiah himself was you calling yourself a Greek, you calling yourself this, you calling yourself a member of or a citizen of whatever land you're in. And I'm here to tell you that you're something different. You're something different. You were created to be set apart, but you have forgotten who you are. That was the gospel. Well, guess what? That gospel wasn't being preached. I'm bringing it back home now, y'all. That gospel was not being preached and has not been preached for what nearly 2000 years nearly 2000 gregorian calendar years it hasn't been preached until now until why on a widespread basis not until the last you know five to seven years so he said when the gospel has been preached in all nations then shall the son of man appear this is why there's a mad rush to keep these diversions going one diversion after the other, one diversion after the other, one diversion after the other. It is so to it is so that it is to disrupt the preaching of the gospel, which was, hey, you, you, you're something different. I came here to slap you with a cold, wet rag to wake you up, to remind you of who you are. You can't even tap into the power that's lying dormant in you because you do not know who you are. That was the gospel. Now, ask yourself, if the gospel was Jesus loves you and he died for your sins, if that's what the gospel that was being preached in all nations by the, the, the disciples and the apostles and them, if that's what the gospel was, would the Romans kill anybody for that? Would the Romans kill anybody for uh, saying that a guy that they killed on a cross loved them? It doesn't even make sense. Like that's that's like being mad at at at. <laughs> I won't say anything about the Dallas Cowboys fans. I won't do that. That's like being mad at uh, a, a fan of a team that has never won a championship for saying, "Hey, man, you know, uh, uh, we're gonna be champions one day." Y'all never won a championship. How could you be mad at a fan of a team that never won a championship for saying we're the best? That's laughable. So this whole notion of the, the gospel that we're getting the 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 prophets and the um uh the apostles and the disciples and such uh uh post ascension the gospel that was getting them killed was them telling the world that that Jesus loved them and died for their sins that and that got them killed it doesn't add up but if you're going throughout these nations of the earth wherein the children of Israel were scattered and the gospel that you're preaching is hey you're not these people that you're among. You're the people, you're the children of the promise. You're the children who once ruled the Canaan land, who inhabited and ruled the Canaan land. You're the ones by whose strength the pyramids were built. Wake up. You're, you're better than you're behaving right now. Now that, that, hey, wait, why are you bowing down to these uh, pagan gods that are held in such high esteem in these lands in which you've been scattered, that's those aren't your gods. Now that's a problem now. That's a problem now because you're going against the establishment. And if you're going against the establishment with truth, then that, you can see how that would have been a problem. So I, I need y'all to understand something. The gospel is being preached right now. <laughs> the same gospel that got the uh the uh the the disciples and, and the disciples of the disciples who were the disciples of the of the Messiah himself. That gospel that were getting them persecuted, that, that's the gospel that went silent and went dark for centuries, millennia even, millennia, millennia. Well, I won't say millennia because it hadn't been quite two millenniums, but a millennium and some change. How about that? That's the gospel that for a millennium and some change uh, went dormant be, be through the persecution. Look at the Spanish Inquisition. OK, if you do, if you understand your history, you know, the Spanish Inquisition was to uh, 
uh, to drive out. They, they taught you in the school books. Oh, it's to drive out heretics. Who were the heretics? <laughs> the heretics were those people that uh, history labeled the Moors. You know what the Moors were? Oh, the Moors were black people. No, that was the name that was given to them to hide their identity. The Moors were a collection of Ishmaelites and Israelites that conquered the Iberian Peninsula in 711 AD and ruled it until the 1400s. All right. That was who the Moors were. History called them the Moors because it's a collect, it's a, it's a clever cloak. But they were cousins. The Ishmaelites and the Israelites were cousins. How was that? Because Isaac and Ishmael were brothers. And they split and they went different ways. Y'all know the story if you read the scripture. I'm not going to go into it. <sighs> the gospel is being preached right now. So this is why I said in my last post, we won't have a lot of time left. A lot of y'all running around here like this thing is just going to go on forever. You see right now that <laughs> the world was flipped on its head by. I'm not going to I'm not going to rehash my world. Yo, go on, go on, go on to my YouTube channel and watch my world at war video. Watch my world at war video. I explained it there. The world was flipped on its head. The U.S. was flipped on its head in a matter of 30 days in the month of March 2020. The U.S. was flipped and turned into something it never was. And y'all running around here thinking you got a lot of time and things are going to go back to normal. It ain't no normal. Everything that's happening was written to happen. And any author will tell you, <laughs> the author always knows how the story begins and how it ends and how it develops. All right. It's the reader that's got to read it. And no matter how bad the reader wants the story to go a certain way, it can only go the way that the author wrote it. Put that in your back pocket, y'all. It's your favorite storyteller, Matt D. Talbot. This was just an impromptu video. I'm going to call this Maddie's Rap, but we rapping today. I just wanted to rap with y'all this morning. Um, now back to your regularly scheduled programming or your regularly disciplined studying. Peace, y'all.